back to school night in the ceramics studio. Uh, this is my flat selfie. You may see your student running around um, with one as they work on their uh, flat selfie project this week. They are finding the elements of art and taking their flat selfie along to be in the pictures um, this week. My name is Emily Kelly and I teach the ceramics uh, courses here at Pencrest. Uh, this is my contact information. Uh, easiest uh, method would be email at ekelly at rtmsd.org, but there is my phone number as well if that works better for, for you. A little about me, I have my bachelor's in art education from Kutztown and a minor in crafts. I knew very early on that ceramics was what I was going to pursue um, and hopefully teach. And so I pursued a, a minor just out of a, a love for ceramics, but also in hopes of being a really specialized educator, which I am now very happy uh, to say that I am. And I also have my master's in education, but particularly instructional technology, which three years ago when I um, completed this, I never thought that we would be in a fully virtual setting. Um, so it's been a really interesting ride, a really interesting transition and, and finding ways to take a really uh, primarily 3D course um, that involves manipulatives with your hands and, and bring it online, at least for the meantime, um, in a meaningful way and how we can continue to use um, resources online to supplement our in-class instruction, which has been kind of really exciting. This is my ninth year teaching art, my seventh year here at Pencrest teaching ceramics, and this is 100% uh, my dream job. I'm very lucky. We offer three different ceramics courses. Um, ceramics A and B are both semester courses. They're often taken in the same year by students, but they are not required um, to be taken that way. And then advanced ceramics is a full year that can be taken up to three times. It has a rotating curriculum, meaning that students have the opportunity, if they choose to, to take ceramics for all four years there at Pencrest. I am a firm believer that this is something that our program offers that um, a lot of others don't, that if a student decides early on that this is a, an area of interest for them, um, allowing them four years to really grow um, in an area I think is a really ex uh, excellent opportunity. Ceramics A focuses on the foundations. So the four types of hand building, uh, the foundations of, of each of those, in addition to introducing them to the pottery wheel. Uh, at this point, we've put that on hold until at least we return for hybrid and we'll revisit that um, uh, when, when we are back in person. In addition to those types of hand building, we're worried about um, the stages of clay and firing and having them have a, a, a general understanding of that. Glazing, um, we go into different glazing techniques. Um, Ceramics B builds on that foundation, but also allows students to start to um, develop their own artistic voice. They start to uh, be able to choose a, a construction method versus being told that you need to use this one. We start to combine them together. We layer in um, different types of surface decoration, uh, scraffito, different techniques that um, span a variety of cultures um, and, and, and histories as well in, in the ceramic world. We also do a little bit more um, complicated glazing, uh, layering glazes, using stencils, um, things of that nature. A couple things that are um, kind of unique to this re remote learning situation with ceramics is we've uh, slightly altered the class structure. So Mondays are going to be um, introduction of assignments and demonstration days. I'll demonstrate throughout the week as well, like in small groups and as needed, but formally those will be Mondays. And then Tuesdays through Thursdays are open studios days where um, students are actively making art. Um, they're in class on a call. I give feedback. We do small group conferencing um, and, and really help them through with technique and any issues or questions they might have while they're working. And then Fridays we share out work and critique. Um, we want students to start to um, get comfortable 
talking about their artwork and sharing, especially in the online setting, it's really important that that dialogue happens. We are providing kits uh, with tools and also consumable materials for students to make artwork at home. Uh, there are consumable materials, which are materials that will be used up for a project, and then there are non-consumable which are the tools and supplies that would need to be returned to us at the end of the course or at the end of the project. Those non-consumables um, in terms of ceramic tools are quite expensive. And so um, we really need them to be returned in good usable condition. That is an actual obligation. So when you pick up your tools, you will receive a breakdown of what is in there and the cost to replace those items. You'll also re be receiving art bins to store the ceramic work while students are working on it. Um, and then when we return to a hybrid setting, they will be stored on our shelves in our classroom historically, like we've always done to keep everyone's work separate. Those materials will need to be picked up from school and then completed work be dropped back off at school. I'll communicate those dates to students and then also email parents directly. I know that you need time to plan um, in order to make it here. So the art the first pickup would be the art kits um, and including clay in their bins. And we're hoping for some time at the end of next week um, to have those all ready to go for the first project. I will keep you updated. Ceramics A and B, uh, work is primarily done in class. It is project-based. Students work on assignments during the open studio times um, with me available for questions and to provide feedback and also their peers. There is minimal homework in the Ceramics A and the Ceramics B courses. Missing assignments are indicated in Schoology as missing. So depending on where you check your students' grades, they might look slightly different. So in Schoology, they'll show as missing, which I do intentionally so that students can see what they still are responsible for submitting. So anything that's missing, I still need a submission for. But when you check in hack, those missing assignments will show as a zero. And that's just the way that the Schoology program and the hack program talk to each other. So the mid-marking period deadline for first marking period is October 2nd. So anything between now and October 2nd can be turned in by October 2nd. If students turn in a project and they're unhappy with it and they'd like to redo it and turn it in, as long as it's before October 2nd, they're more than welcome to do that. Anything that appears in hack as a zero can be done and turned in for a grade. After October 2nd, anything that has not been turned in will turn into a zero. And then we move on to the content for the second half of the marking period. We spent the last week, two weeks really, trying to get to know each other and for me to, to get to know my students. And so we did that through a, a project called Get to Know Me Assemblages. And assemblage is just a collection of items that's arranged in a, in a cohesive and interesting, interesting way with a good composition. So we had students select at least six items that represented themselves. So the things they like, the things they do, the things that are important to them, um, find objects that represented that, arrange them and photograph them in an interesting composition. We discussed lighting, how to photograph your artwork correctly, symbolism, a variety of different topics. And their work was absolutely stunning. So there's a couple examples. Talked about some of the ways that we can use um, color and composition and how do you bring in texture and it really opened up a lot of um, interesting discussions. There is a wealth of information in Schoology that I wanted to point out, including the course syllabus in detail. I've covered quite a few topics from it in this video, but if you want to read it in its entirety, um, more information about art kits, office hours, clay safety, all of that, if you go um, into Schoology on my main page here, uh, my welcome slides include um, welcome video about me, course navigation on how to navigate Schoology and how I organize things. Um, I am using units and modules and they go in order. So each thing should be completed before the next per the next item is started. And I use the calendar. So uh, assignments populate in students calendar and here on the side um, under up uh, under upcoming so they know exactly what is due when and then 
there are also um, links to the syllabus there as well. My office hours, you can click here and sign up for a particular time slot um, during my office hours at the end of the day, my contact information and additional resources, the art course contract, Zoom etiquette, some tech things. And again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to email me at ekelly at rtmsd.org and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I'm so glad that um, you were able uh, to attend virtual uh, back to school night. I would have loved for, for you to get an opportunity to see my classroom. So hopefully that happens um, at some point this year.